I'm revisiting the Tascam DR60D digital audio recorder to see how it holds up now at the end of 2017 as both a standalone digital audio recorder and as a field recorder. Hi, I'm Tim Frost and a while ago I was looking for a way of streamlining the audio recording for my video setup. Up until then, I'm using an XLR phantom powered studio microphone into a mixer, then into a Behringer A to D interface, and then straight into my laptop, uh, which is running Audacity software. Now that all runs very nicely, but it's not really a very neat and tidy solution. So I looked around for a standalone recorder that had all that functionality I needed, the XLRs and the phantom powered, and would streamline the operation. I was looking around the $200 level and there aren't many recorders out there that come without microphones. Those with are things like the Tascam DR40 and the Zoom H, which are good recording systems. They're portable, you've got the mics, they do indeed have XLR inputs. But I was looking for something a little more standalone that maybe had physical controls and also had that little bit of extra functionality. If you haven't come across the DR60 in detail, it's an SD card based 4 channel digital audio recorder. It's got XLR inputs for a pair of phantom powered mics and it has all these extra features to work as a field recorder for recording audio for video. The current version is the Mark II and that costs around $200. Now you can find the Mark 1 on eBay and they're a bit cheaper, but they do hold their price, which is in some degree a good thing. Now the difference with the Mark 2 to the Mark 1 is even better quality mic preamps. The Mark 1 is good, the Mark 2 is even better, and some extra functionality on the software. Now if you get the Mark 1, you can upgrade the software and you get most of the functions of the Mark 2. So just go to the Tascam website and you'll find all the instructions and the software there. It records to SD cards or external memory using the USB connector here. You can use up to 32 gig cards and I always use class 10 just to be on the safe side. And anyway, they're cheap enough nowadays. It runs on four AA batteries or via the USB connector, which you can run with any standard USB charger. Now, uh, the, some of the reviews you'll see actually complain about the lifespan of the batteries uh, when you're recording. Um, I think some of those reviews may be quite old and using earlier rechargeables. Uh, the rechargeables I've got in here are 2500 milliamp hour, and I've run this running a single phantom power mic for five hours. So really not a lot to complain about there but also it's sort of irrelevant because if you went out on a record and you took your lights and your camera and your tripods and everything else it'd be rather nuts just to rely on one set of batteries so i think recording time i don't see as an issue the build quality is good but not super heavy duty it is a $200 unit and not a $2,000 one. The mic inputs use the standard combined XLR jack connectors and the preamps are excellent, even in the Mark I, and there's plenty gain, so it'll work with low output mics without running into noise problems. Record channels two and three, the inputs are on a stereo 3.5 jack, and that'll work with higher output mics or line inputs. High output mics could be electrics used for videos or cell phones, which also has plug-in power functionality. These channels can also be used for dual recording. More of that in a moment. Being studio specialists, Tascam have added good quality limiters to keep a lid on unexpected peaks. And there's also a good bass roll-off filter, which you can set to three different frequencies. It's a four channel recorder records in 44.1, 48 or 96K at 16 or 24 bit. 
Now the recording formats are WAV or BWF. Now, if you're wondering what BWF is, uh, it's basically the broadcast version of WAV. Exactly the same file, except it carries a little extra data on the files. Now the recording time uh, is going to be pretty good. If you've got a 32 gig card and you're recording at the basic stereo 44.1 16 bit, you're going to get 50 hours, 50 hours on a single card. Go into the highest possible standard, four channel 96K 24 bit, that comes down to a miserly five hours per card. So recording time, not really a problem. Uh, by the way, it doesn't record MP3. Uh, it's a semi-pro unit. Why would you? I put a camera mount screw in on the bottom here just to hold the DR6C at an angle when I'm working on a desk. To record, I plug the mic in, select the phantom power and adjust the levels. There are peak lights and a readout of the actual peak levels. Press record to arm the recorder and press again to go into record. Press record again if you want to pause and hit stop to finish. Playback is via the line outputs or through headphones, uh, which just plug into the side and have their own dedicated volume control, which is rather handy. I found the actual playback control a wee bit hidden. Uh, you have to use the fast forward or fast rewind to choose the file that you want on the screen and then you hit play to listen to it. What I really like about the DR60 is the physical interface with real buttons and switches. The setup is done through the screen controlled by this data wheel. None of the functions are that deeply hidden, so it is pretty quick to set up. So that's all great as a standalone recorder, but remember the DR60 was built from the ground up as a field recorder to go with your video. So let's connect it all up and see how that works. It's got standard camera quarter inch screws top and bottom, so it can go between the base of the camera and your tripod. Connect the Tascam's output to your camera's input. You'll need to find yourself a short 3.5mm stereo lead to do this. Set your levels up from the mic to the Tascam first and then from the Tascam to the camera so you get all the levels matching. I've set the Tascam up to put a slate tone on when you start recording and when you stop recording and that goes on to both the Tascam and the camera. So this makes it very easy to sync the audio to the video when you come to post-production. Put the camera into record and then hit record on the Tascam. Then you're rolling. When you've done, switch the task cam off and then your camera off. And then in your editor, you can see the top and tail slate tones make it very easy to sync the task cam audio with the audio on your video. So that's the basics. But there are a few more interesting little features built in here designed specifically for the videographer. There's a simple mixer. And there is, of course, the limiters and the low frequency roll off. There's also MS mode, which is mid side, if you want to go down that rather fancy recording route. But perhaps the neat little secret that Tascam have put in here is dual recording, which makes the most of the four channel recordability of the DR60D. The Tascam records a duplicate of your audio on the second pair of channels but you set these at a lower record level. So if your sound gets unexpectedly loud, a loud playing or a shout, this backup track gives you an undistorted safety copy. And that's a real confidence boost when you're working out and about. So how does the DR60 hold up, having been on the market for five years? Well, the electronics quality is high as is the sound quality, and you have the professional inputs XLRs with phantom powering and physical controls. And the build quality is more than good enough. 
At this price point, it's rather unique, with the format that can be used as a standalone recorder or easily mounted on a camera system. So if you do want to move up, this is a really good starting point, both as a standalone recorder and a field recorder that has all the functionalities that you're going to need. If you want to go better, then you've really got to spend twice as much and go to things like the Zoom F-Series or the bigger Tascams. So if it's quality and functionality and it's physical controls and it's professional inputs and outputs, the DR60 really gets my vote. If you found this review useful, give it a like. And why not subscribe for more video hardware coverage and, of course, video editing tutorials. Mm -hmm.